a little frustrated today. As you know, I'm trying to buy a house, which is not really easy as a music producer, DJ, self-employed, and everyone around me, all of my friends and family, they always tell me the easiest solution would be to just write a hit. And I know they're like half joking, but half kind of serious. Everyone expects from you when you're a musician to write a hit, which is absolutely not that easy. If it would be easy, everyone would do it. But I was thinking about it. It's possible. And I will tell you how. No BS, just like really how it's done, how the big superstars do it, how you could do it, maybe, really depends. So let's get started. So first up, I think we need to look at revenue streams. Most of them are also my revenue streams as a producer. There is gigs, which is probably the biggest for most musicians. Merch, advertisement, kind of being an influencer, that's a big deal right now. Also, the music itself, which is like the, the least and the most indirect, which is kind of weird. And then there's, of course, a bunch of other stuff, but those are like your core income sources, maybe also like your, your copyright, royalty kind of stuff. And for a hit, the most important is to make something that appeals to most people. That's why pop music usually, not all pop music, is a little more generic. And that's just... For example, take um, let's let's take David Guetta. He produces his own music, probably not at all. He's involved in who makes what, but usually he kind of gets people to collaborate with him, people that are really really good. So he discovers new people. He is a DJ. He listens to music. If he hears something by someone that he really likes, he gets in touch and helps that person to build up their career, but also this person makes songs for him. This happened, for example, with Afrojack. Afrojack um, was totally unknown. Geta was super famous and he, he helped him. Afrojack was making a style that was more and more popular, especially like in the club music scene. David Geta saw that, got that guy kind of to work with him together and both benefited. Another example would be um, Stay, Rihanna. It's actually written by, I think his name is Miki, Miki Echo, Miko Echo, I don't know. Um, he made the song. The entire song was already finished. His management then pitched it to Rihanna and she was like, yeah, could be a nice song for my album. I just have to re-sing half of it and, and we got a nice song. It ended up being a quite big song and jump-started the career for this mostly unknown singer-songwriter. So when it comes to a hit, it's not just making that hit song. It's also all about having the supporting structure to make that song a hit song. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine I'm sitting here in my studio, I'm making music, and I make a song that has the potential to be a huge hit. It still won't be a hit. I'm way too small as an artist. I'm not well enough connected to get it to the right labels. And even those big labels, even if you present them a hit song, they might not know it's a hit song because most of them <laughs> are a little stupid, to be honest. Um, they, only, they only check for numbers. They know how many followers you have on Instagram, on YouTube, on Spotify, how many plays you have per month. That's what counts. They don't care about the song itself, basically. You have to make a song that is good enough, so no one complains, yes, obviously. But then also you have to have like the surrounding where someone big in the industry just thinks, okay, I can make money off of this guy. And then they will start helping you promoting it, putting it in the right places so people actually listen to it, pitch it to the radio stations, get some plays. And then the rest, the entire rest of this, even like a David Guetta that has all the money available, can work with whoever he wants to, even then, the last bit is really up to a certain amount of luck, a certain amount of stuff you cannot predict. You, you just can't. It's, it's really hard. You just have to release a song and maybe a big influencer posts about it. Maybe it's something controversial. Maybe the video is really funny. Like these kind of things can draw attention to a song. And once you have attention to your song, 
people will start listening to it, even if it's just like half good song. If people are constantly like listening to it by accident because someone plays it on the radio for them or in TV shows, Netflix shows, stuff like that, um, people will start getting a little addicted to it and like it more and more. You probably know that feeling. You listen to a song for the first time and you're like, eh, nothing special. And then constantly you hear it here and there and after a while you start liking it more and more and eventually you get kind of addicted and have to listen to it on repeat 24 7. People make that on purpose, making songs that are simple, less notes, less jumps, easy to sing along, very repetitive. Those are like on the musical side the key features probably to write a hit. So we got Musically, simple, easy, collaborating, working with the right people in the industry. And for that, you need following social media. You need to have a standing. People need to talk about you. You need to be interesting also as a person. And then that lucky song that eventually kind of takes off, which you can't fully control. I know so many artists that have a management, huge labels, and they release constantly good music, but never a hit. And then the last part is to just repeat all of that constantly, of course. And an even bigger part above all of these five components is what, what the superstars actually do. Yes, they collaborate with other people, but there is even like a, a bigger part to it. And it starts at the very, very beginning. Like I, I always call it rough sketching. That's also what I do here. I make 10 songs, just an hour each, and then pick out of these 10 the best ones and finish that one. And that's the same that also happens for the superstars, but on a way, 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 way bigger scale. Let's take, for example, I don't know, Dua Lipa or everyone does it basically the same. It's like the standard approach to music making. The artist is never writing or almost never writing the lyrics. Sometimes, they're part of the session. The session is usually a producer, a singer, songwriter, or two singer songwriters, maybe someone that plays the piano really well, maybe a guitar player. Like musically clever, smart, young, fresh people that just cook up some stuff together in sessions. Sometimes like a week, they rent a studio, throw in those talented people and let them just do rough sketches. And then after a week, the, the management or the label, they listen to all of these, decide which one of them is like the most commercially potentially successful, and then pitch those songs to big artists. So for example, Ed Sheeran does a lot of singing, songwriting, and he, he writes a lot of songs for other people. He finishes the entire song as a rough sketch, and then his management sends it out to other artists. For example, then Justin Bieber picked up a song or he wrote one for Rihanna, she didn't like it. He ended up releasing it himself and had probably his biggest song of his career. So that rough sketching part is very important. That's how you increase the chance of hitting that one song that is somehow kind of special. It's basically just a numbers game. If you put a lot of talented people together and just let them work and then just pick the best stuff, you're definitely better off because the promotion part, the marketing is way too expensive and way too risky. Imagine like thinking about a hit of the view of a label. The label has to spend like, let's say a million to promote a song. They want to be sure that that song can get them a million back. So they just let young people that are not getting paid really well, usually not at all, make a bunch of stuff and then just pick whatever they think has the most potential. So those are kind of the mechanisms, the kind of things you have to check and to do to write a hit. Usually like writing a hit, just you yourself as a single person, I'd say is nearly impossible. It happens, but it's so rare. It's more a constant, slowly growing, working harder, working together with other people, building up a fan base and then eventually after years and years of releasing good music maybe that one song kind of pops but it's hard to control really hard to control anyways i hope this episode helped you a little to give you an insight into the music industry if you're interested for more kind of music insight content don't forget to subscribe 
Let me know what you think about this entire topic. Are you trying to ride a hit? Is it something you can control? Is it impossible? Let me know. See you tomorrow back again here in the studio. Fighting, fighting.